Understanding the different airspeeds such as indicated, calibrated, true airspeed, and ground speed can be a little bit overwhelming at first, but once you actually break them down one by one, you notice it's pretty simple to get a good understanding and grasp of them. Hello everyone, my name is Steve, the Wired Flyer, and I break down aviation concepts in a simple to understand way. And today we'll be going over the four airspeeds that you should know and understand as a student pilot. So without wasting any more time, let's dive right in. Now, first off, let's look at the indicated airspeed, which is what you see in the cockpit. And I'm more specifically talking about an analog instrument airspeed indicator, as opposed to a glass cockpit, where they're actually gonna display the indicated and true airspeed all digitally right there because it has computers within it. But on the classic analog six pack, you've got the indicated airspeed only. And the indicated airspeed works by comparing the pitot pressure with the static pressure. So the pitot pressure would be the air being forced into a tube that you're you know, flying through. And the static pressure would be the atmospheric pressure. The indicated airspeed is not 100% true though. It is not corrected for things like position or instrument error. So the pitot tube is measuring the air molecules that you're flying through through and using that to display it on your indicated airspeed. But because different moments in flight, you might have your flaps extended, you're going to be flying at a different angle of attack. So that air might not go directly straight into the pitot tube. So there are minor faults within the readings. So why is the airspeed indicator so important? Well, it's used for pretty much all flight operations. So that includes your V speeds, which are kind of your limits and minimums and target airspeeds to try to hit as a pilot. V speeds speeds are given in indicated airspeed because that's what you fly by, that's what you see in the cockpit, and that's what the airplane was tested on. Now I have a whole video going over the different types of V-speeds that you can click right here or in the video description below. So basically indicated airspeed is the raw uncorrected airspeed. And once you make those corrections for position error or instrument error, then you get the calibrated airspeed. And then once you make altitude corrections from the calibrated airspeed, you get true airspeed. But let's not go too far ahead of ourselves. Let's focus on the calibrated airspeed first. So calibrated airspeed is the indicated airspeed corrected for small instrument and position errors. So instrument error would be the small little errors the airspeed indicator is making because of mechanical imperfections or maybe some wear and tear. And then there's also position error, which we went over a little bit earlier. The errors caused by the position of the pitot tube or the static port, or even minor airflow distortions that happen around these sensors. Basically errors in readings from how the air is flowing into the sensors and causing a small error in the readings. So calibrated airspeed gets us closer to the true aerodynamic forces on the aircraft. And for most small aircraft, IAS and C CAS are very close in comparison with only very small changes during different configurations. Pilots do not make these calculations when they're in flight for the calibrated airspeed, but they are all located in graphs and such in the pilot operating handbook. And moving on, we have true airspeed, which is how fast you're actually moving through the air. And it is calibrated airspeed corrected for altitude and temperature changes. So as you climb and gain altitude, there are fewer air molecules in the air. Therefore, the pitot will have less air molecules flowing into it. And the airspeed indicator might actually display a lower airspeed than the true airspeed you're flying at. Now, assuming standard temperature, true airspeed increases about 2% for every thousand feet of altitude gained. Why does true airspeed matter? Well, it's crucial for flight planning, navigation, and fuel calculations. And lastly, we have ground speed, which is true airspeed corrected for wind. So after making all these corrections, we finally end up with ground speed. So if you have a tailwind of 20 knots and you're flying at 
120 knots true airspeed, your ground speed will be 140 knots. And ground speed matters because it affects how long your trip will take, not necessarily the aerodynamic forces. Now, another airspeed that's rarely tested on for your PPL, but still good to know, is equivalent airspeed. And the equivalent airspeed is calibrated airspeed corrected for compressibility effects at high speeds and altitudes. This is really only relevant to supersonic flight and high performance aircraft. Zoom, zoom. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you made it this far, don't forget to like the video, drop a comment what you want me to make a video on next and subscribe to join me on the journey going from electrician to pilot at 30 years old with a family. Before I let you go, don't forget, keep learning, stay motivated, and chase your dreams. Let's go.